biology. Yes, so after that, the next disorder, which is the fourth disorder now, uh, we have albuminuria or proteinuria. So albuminuria or proteinuria is the next disease whereby albuminuria from the word albumin. Albumin, the one for the egg, is a protein. So this disorder, we see that this is a disorder whereby albumin can be found in the urine. So if you take the urine sample for this person suffering, we test the urine, we are going to find out that the urine contains albumin protein. So albumin mainly is a protein which is found in the blood. So that's where it is found. In mammals, it's found in blood. In the buds, it is found in the egg, inside the egg. So that content of the egg, we have the albumin. So in the mammals, it's mainly found in blood only. So when it is present in urine, it means that obviously there is some disorder in the nephrons, there's some disorder in the kidney, there's uh, some disorder in the ultrafiltration process that was taking place. Because remember in the glomerulus, no protein is allowed to pass. But now, in this disorder, there's some albumin, there's some protein. Albumin is protein. So it's like there's some protein in urine. Therefore, it points to us there's some problem with the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus uh, to function appropriately. So what are the causes of albuminuria or proteinuria? So the first cause is, uh, is bacterial infection. So if this person is affected with a bacteria, it will cause this disorder. So the bacteria specifically for causing this disorder, it will cause the albuminuria. Apart from that, we have high blood sugar level. So high blood sugar level, which is referred to as hyperglycemia. So people who have high blood sugar level, which points us to high blood pressure. So high blood sugar level will cause, uh, which is referred to as hyperglycemia, can also cause albuminuria. Apart from that, the next symptom is people suffering from high blood pressure or hypertension. So these people having hypertension or high blood pressure, they have a very high chance of developing this disorder, which is referred to as the albuminuria. Apart from that, we see that if one has a damaged kidney, a kidney which does not function appropriately, so they'll also suffer from this disease, which is referred to as the albuminuria also. So what are the signs and symptoms of albuminuria? So the first sign and symptom is frequent urination. These people have shortness of breath. These people, uh, they feel tired and fatigued. So there's tiredness and fatigue of the people suffering from this disease. There is nausea and vomiting, so they also feel nauseated and then they can also vomit. The swelling of the face, belly, and the ankles. So if you look at their faces, their faces look puffy. Their bellies, they have a round belly, like that. So a round belly, swollen faces, puffy faces, and also the ankles of the feet, the ankles of the hand, of the hand they look swollen. Mm, they complain of poor appetite. They do not have an appetite. They have muscle crampings. If they move their muscle like this, there are those cramping sounds that you, you hear cramping sound, muscle crampings. Apart from that, neck puffiness. So apart from this, uh, the face swelling like that, if you also check the neck, the neck also feels like there is some fluid inside. So the neck is also puffy like some sort. And finally, it may be fatal. If the disorder is not checked in good time, if it's not treated in good time, the disorder may turn to be fatal. So it might be fatal. What are the control and treatment of albuminuria? So the control and treatment of proteinuria or, or albuminuria, the first one obvious, early diagnosis to detect the problem. Basically, all the diseases of this world, all of them, so early diagnosis is always the first treatment and control to detect the problem because if it can be able to be detected early enough, uh, its progression can be able to be stopped. The disease can be eliminated easily from the body. So apart from that, the next one is low protein in the diet. So take low protein in the diet as well as low sugar intake. So take very low amount of sugar. Apart from sugar, low salt intake, and then use relevant antibiotics to treat the disease. Because this disorder is a bacterial infection. 
Bacterial infection are treated using antibiotics. So use relevant antibiotics in order to eliminate the problem from the body. So the next disease is referred to as renal failure or kidney failure. So that's the next disease, kidney failure or renal failure. Simply, kidney failure, this is a disorder which is brought about when the kidney fails to function. So if both kidneys or if one kidney fails to function, this is mainly, um, this is mainly referred to as kidney failure. So what are the causes of kidney failure? So the cause of kidney failure, first of all, the most common one is the most common one is physical injury. So if the kidney has been injured physically, so it won't function. So it will lead to kidney failure. So physical injury, apart from physical injury, so the next uh, cause is that untreated diabetes. And untreated diabetes is the most common cause of kidney failure. Physical injury is it's even rare. It's even rare for someone to, to be hit on the kidney or anything, physical injury on the kidney. But untreated diabetes, this is the most common cause of kidney failure. So if, if you know someone having diabetes, ask them to go and seek medical attention immediately. Why? Because untreated diabetes can cause kidney failure can cause heart failure, can cause uh, vision loss. So vision loss, it can cause vision loss, it can cause stroke on severe incidences. So diabetes, untreated diabetes is very, is very serious. So untreated diabetes is the most common cause of kidney failure. So apart from that, we have also high blood pressure or hypertension. So high blood pressure or hypertension is also another most common cause of kidney failure because this high blood pressure is going to rupture the blood vessels of the kidney. If the renal arterial or the, um, the renal vein are ruptured by the high pressure of the, of the blood, it will mean that they will not function. If they will not function, the kidney will not be supplied by... Uh, with nutrients from the blood. If it won't be supplied by nutrients from the blood, it will mean that it will not, it will die, the kidney will die. So if it will die, that is kidney failure. So, untreated diabetes, high blood pressure, those are the two most common causes of kidney failure. Apart from low blood pressure due to heart failure. So if the heart fails, it doesn't function, there will be no pumping of blood to the kidney, kidney will lose nutrients, then it will stop functioning. So we have high blood pressure, which will lead to rupturing of the blood vessel. We have low blood pressure, which will lead to heart failure. Heart failure will lead to not supplying kidney with enough, uh, with enough blood. So kidney will lose nutrients and then it will also die. Apart from that, we have shock. So we have shock, electric shock, or just the normal shock. So this one can cause also kidney failure. Apart, uh, apart from that, we also have autoimmune disease so autoimmune disease which is referred to as lupus so lupus is very it's a very bad disease whereby the white blood cells of the body will try to eliminate the cells of the body the good cells of the body the white blood cells are going to fight by themselves the white blood cells are going to destroy the organs of the body and it's like the white blood cells they have been possessed they are, they are destroying what should not be destroyed in the body. So instead of white blood cells destroying pathogens, the white blood cells, they are now destroying their own body cells. They are destroying other cells like red cells. They are destroying tissues. They are destroying the different organs in the body. Condition is called lupus. And it's a, it's a very rare condition, yet it's a very, it's a very bad condition. So autoimmune disease can also lead to kidney failure, whereby the cells of the body may now turn to kidney and destroy the kidney. So they may destroy the first kidney, destroy the second kidney, to lead to kidney failure. So now, what are the signs and symptoms of kidney diseases? So the first sign and symptom is oedema. You remember oedema, we say that the swelling, so there's some fluid buildup under the skin and the tissues, which will, lead, uh, which will make the body to look puffy. Puffy in the sense that it feels like a balloon if you press, it feels like a balloon. So that is oedema. 
So the first sign and symptom is oedema. The second one is shortness of breath. Then we have fatigue and tiredness. We have confusion. After confusion, we have nausea and vomiting. And then after that, we have irregular heartbeat. So there's also irregular heartbeat for the signs and symptoms of uh, kidney failure. So among others. So there are also different other signs and symptoms of kidney failure that there is. So apart from these signs and symptoms, so treatment and control. Remember the first treatment always. Early diagnosis to detect and eliminate the problem. That is always the first sign and symptom. Early diagnosis to detect and, el and eliminate the problem. So apart from that early diagnosis, so the next one is heart treatment. So if the heart can be able to be treated in order to maintain a constant blood pressure, there won't be any kidney failure. Because remember, kidney failure, we say that it is brought by low blood pressure, by a dying heart. So a dying heart will pump blood at low blood pressure. The kidney won't receive enough blood, it will finally die. High blood pressure caused by the heart also and the blood vessels. So high blood pressure must also be treated because this pressure might lead to the rupture and bursting of the kidney blood vessels, which may lead to low nutrient reaching the kidney. So the kidney will cause new, will will not receive enough nutrients and then it will finally die. So heart treatment is very much important. So apart from heart treatment, we have hemorrhage, which is internal bleeding. After hemorrhage, we have uh, kidney dialysis. So after kidney dialysis, finally we have kidney transplant. So if the kidney has failed completely, it's not functioning. So another treatment and control is kidney transplant. So we get a kidney from the donor, then we, take, we place it to the recipient, and they live a normal life. So now apart from that disorder, so we go to the next disorder of the kidney, which is urinary tract infection, mostly, uh, most commonly referred to as UTI, urinary tract infection. So for this urinary tract infection, we see that this is an infection of any part of the urinary tract system. That is either the kidney, the ureta, the bladder, or the urethra. So, infection of any part of the urinary system, be it the kidney, the bladder, the ureter, the urethra, so infection of this sort is referred to as UTI or urinary tract infection. So, you see that this UTI disorder is mostly common in females than in males. That is urinary tract infection. It is most common in females than in males. So, it is so it is about 10 in 1 males that get urinary tract infection. 10 females in 1 male that get UTI. So UTI is mostly common in females than in males. But why? Why is UTI mostly common in females than in males? So for the anatomy of the female, we can see that the female's urethra is very short. But the male's urethra is very long. Therefore, if a pathogen wants to affect the female urinary tract system, it will only travel a very short distance and, it's, and already it is inside the female uh, urinary tract system, whereby inside the female urinary tract system is very moist and therefore by this moist nature, it can be able not to multiply, it can be able to undertake reproduction, it can be able to excrete all the characteristic of living organism. This pathogen, pathogen is going to multiply very fast there and after multiplication very fast, it's going to affect either the kidney, the urethra, the bladder, etc. But for the males, you see that the urethra is very long. So since the urethra in males is very long, if a pathogen tries to enter through the urethra, the pathogen's chance of getting eliminated in the male urethra is very high because since the urethra is very long, the acidic deposits on the male urethra are going to eliminate the pathogen. So the pathogen is going to be eliminated by the acidic environment of the male urethra. So the chance by which it will survive in the male urethra is very slim because by the time it has to move from the tip up to now the urinary bladder, that passage is very long. That environment is very harsh on acids of different pH. So it will not survive in the male urethra, or rather the chances by which it will survive are very slim. But for the female, the urethra is very, is very short. 
So since it's very short, it will travel a very short distance and it is already in the urinary tract system. And therefore there it is able now to multiply and affect the female, uh, whereby if it affects the females, we'll, uh, we'll say that they have a urinary tract infection. So that is the reason why it is most commonly in females than in males. The answer lies in the length of the urethra. The males have a longer one, so it is difficult for it to survive. The females have a shorter one, so it is very easy for it to survive and thrive uh, inside the urinary tract system of the females. So basically, what are the causes of urinary tract infection? So the most common cause of UTI is bacteria. So bacteria is the most common cause of urinary tract infection. Apart from the bacteria, also we have kidney stones, poor personal hygiene also is another cause. Because if the personal hygiene of the reproductive areas is very low, bacteria will easily thrive down there. So if they easily try, thrive down there, they will always look for a way of finding a moist place in order to inhabit. So if they find a moist place in the reproductive organs, they may climb up to the urinary tract system, which may cause more harm than good. So poor personal hygiene is also another cause for urinary tract infection. Apart from that, also this, the diabetes is also another cause. Apart from that, uh, not completely emptying the bladder during urination. So not completely emptying the bladder during urination is, might be very tragic. So always make sure that you have completely emptied the bladder. You have removed everything when you went for urination so that you say that now I'm feeling fine. So apart from that, we also have tumors in the urinary tract system. So tumors can also, uh, tumors can also lead to UTI whereby they will predispose that person to different environmental, different diseases, different symptoms, or different agents of the UTI as a whole. So for this diagram, you can see the diagram of UTI. If you can look at this diagram, you can see those pathogens uh, already invading the, ur the urinary tract. So the pathogens already invading the urinary tract. And remember, urinary tract infection is any infection of any of these parts, the urinary system, be it the kidneys, be it the urethra, be it the ureta, be it the bladder, etc., etc. And also remember it is most common in female than in male because in males, a longer urethra, in females, a shorter urethra. So don't forget about that. So apart from that, let's now look at the signs and the symptoms of urinary tract infection or UTI. So that the signs and the symptoms of UTI. So the first sign and symptom of UTI is pain, in, pain on the side of the abdomen. So there is always pain on, the, on one side of the abdomen or in both sides of the abdomen, upper part of the abdomen. So there is pain in the abdomen. So after that, there is frequent need to urinate. There is that frequent need to urinate also as the other cause of, uh, as the other sign and symptom of UTI. Apart from that, there is urine leakage. So, basically, there is urine leakage from the reproductive or from the, from the organs of urination. So, there is urine leakage. Apart from that, uh, apart from that there is also increased night urination. So, in the daytime, you're okay, but at night, these people, they constantly fail to go to urinate. After five minutes, they go. After sleeping for about 15 minutes, they again feel like they need to go and urinate. After some few minutes again, they have gone, they have come back, uh, continue sleeping. After maybe about again 10 minutes, you feel like going to urinate. So there's frequent night urination. Apart from that, there's fatigue and weakness. Uh, fatigue and weakness, yes. So apart from that, there's fever and chills. Mental confusion is also there. Uh, nausea and vomiting, also not to forget those two. So there's also nausea and vomiting. So what are the treatments and control of UTI? So treatment and control, the first one always is say that it is early diagnosis to detect and eliminate the problem. So that is one, early diagnosis. So the second one is using suitable antibiotics to eliminate the problem. Because remember, we say that the most common cause of UTI is bacterium. So since it is caused by a bacterium, so how to eliminate the problem? We use suitable antibiotics to eliminate the problem. 
So that is another treatment and control using suitable antibiotics to detect, uh, to eliminate the problem. So drinking plenty of water. Water is very much important in the circulatory system, digestive system, and also here in the urinary system. So drinking plenty of water to dilute the urine. So if you drink plenty of water to dilute the urine and also to clean the urinary system is very much important. So water is life. Water is much important in maintaining a healthy urinary tract system health. So apart from that, there's another one that we mentioned, completely emptying the bladder after uh, during urination. So completely emptying the bladder. So maybe if you're urinating and then you see a dog coming, so don't mind about the dog. So finish urinating. Completely empty the bladder. After you have emptied the bladder completely, now is when you can now get up and run. And run away. Don't mind about the dog. So the dog will also maybe, maybe try to... And then get up and start running. So make sure you have completely emptied your bladder during urination because this will prevent chances of getting UTI. So apart from that, getting enough vitamin C. So eat a lot of fruits, eat a lot of uh, vegetables, get enough vitamin C to be able to protect you from pathogens when they try to invade the body. Biology.